I'm so attracted like, to like personalities because like I have no clue. I th it might be pan. I heard pansexual. That talk. sounds like everybody. Yeah, everything. that's a, pansexual sounds like everybody. Oh, everything. I, am I think pansexual is everything. We're so bad. Okay. This year. Like, we're like we have yeah. no idea what we're talking it? about. Yeah. <laughs> What do, these, like, what? what do these guys think? Who do they think they are? I heard it's called negging. When a guy like puts you down to then be like, but like if you wanted someone like me, it's like they'll, they'll kind of insult you. That's but then weird. Be They're like, insecure. They, oh, want, so they insecure. wanted to make you feel better to make themselves yeah, feel I've, better. Yeah, I've never been into a guy who's like possessive and secure like that. Like, I'm a brat. Like mm -hmm. if I like start being aggressive with you, like I want you to be like. Smack you back in the plate. Yeah. Were you in a sorority? No, I got okay. kicked out of rush, but like, I, cause I, I just, I relate way more to frat boys than I do to like sorority girls. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> You're listening to Joey Joy Radio. You have to say assholes live forever. Yeah. Is that true? I don't know. I just like the brand. Are you an asshole? I don't know. I'm actually, I'm very bad at being mean to people. <laughs> That's a good quality to have. Yeah, I, I definitely am on some kind of spectrum, like definitely super neurodivergent, so. I just I super can't. what I'm so neurodivergent. What is it? Neurodivergent. Yeah. What does that mean? Like it falls under if you have like ADHD, autism. Um, I think BPD. There's like it's like a social thing. Yeah. And you're saying that makes you uncomfortable being mean to people. It's just like I have a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. I feel regulating my thoughts, but like. But like, I don't really have a lot of mean thoughts about people. Yeah. So it's like, I'm, I can't really be manipulative. I don't know how to do yeah. that. Well, that's that's a green flag. Yeah. <laughs> so you're good. That's yeah. something to be proud of. But it also like rubs a lot of people the wrong way when they meet me because they're mm -hmm. just like, there's something off about this girl. Yeah. And I'm like, it's the neurodivergence. Autism runs in my family, but I can't say I have autism until I'm diagnosed. Yeah. And then also if you get a diagnosis, like I guess mm -hmm. a lot of things in life just become harder. But like, if I had a guess, I'm autistic. You think like if you get an official yeah. medical diagnosis, it makes what in life harder? Oh, it makes a lot of things. So my friend actually has an autism diagnosis and she was telling me that like, there are some like rules and regulations that like if you're autistic, uh, if you're like a diagnosed autistic person, mm -hmm. um, it can make getting a driver's license harder. Like you have to like renew your sense. driver's license and like have special things for it. If you get married, there's like a bigger possibility of you being in like a conservatorship with like your uh, your, your spouse. spouse. That's scary. So they have like uh, a scary amount of control over you. There's like a lot of things that she was telling me, like if you don't have to get a diagnosis, don't, mm -hmm. but like also don't say you're autistic without a diagnosis. Without, yeah. Just be like, I think I am, but I'm that, not sure. Something's up, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I think, that's the right way to go about yeah. it. She's pretty PR trained too. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. one's saying anything's going to get us in trouble. Do you think any of that like comes from, stems from your upbringing? Oh, I have so much PTSD. Yeah. Yeah, I have crazy amount. Um, have Did you guys watch the, it just came out on Netflix, the program? No. It's Do called you know what the it program. Is? Mm -mm. Okay. Tell us. So mm -hmm. basically, I was one of those kids that got kidnapped in the middle of the night and like sent to Utah. Oh, yeah, I read that. We need to hear it. We need to yeah, hear yeah. about yeah. this shit. So um, I was like supposed to be going to this UCLA. How apartment. old were you? I was 17. And you're in LA? Yes, okay. I was in LA. Uh, I was about to go to UCLA a party. Like my friend was on her mm -hmm. way and I didn't realize like my mom turned my phone off. And I was like- Like, I was, your, like your service. Yeah, my because my friend was on her way to my house. Mm -hmm. And like, I was like, she told me she was on her way like an hour and a half ago. Like mm -hmm. it does not take this long to get to my house, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I'm Adelia, guys. We, <laughs> yeah. we, that part. we put your name at the bottom of the okay. screen. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Everyone's gonna know. Everybody you knows who you are. <laughs> so uh, these people came to my house. And they were, the story. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, so they were like these like roided goons that came to my house, right? And they were like, oh, "You're coming with me." I'm like, oh, "What do you mean I'm coming with you?" Like I was like. I wasn't like- You're sick. waiting for your friend to pick you up and these people came yeah. instead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess my friend was like, you know, well, what's going on? Like, why is it she She was answering? there and saw it happen? Or she didn't see it happening. Oh. She was just like- What's she good? Was, yeah. yeah, she like didn't know why I wasn't answering. She was like waiting outside my house. Like she didn't see it happen because at that point she'd already mm -hmm. left because she lived 20 minutes from me. Like it was an hour and a half of like my phone just being off and me being like, where the fuck is she? So these people came to my house. They're like, you're coming with me. I'm like, no, I'm not. And then they were like, you know, we've been stabbed. They showed me their stab mark. They're like, we've chased after people. If you try to run, we'll catch you. If you try to run, we're gonna handcuff you, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, I'm like, okay, it's not worth all that. Did they explain who sent them? No, my parents were just behind them kind of going. Oh, your parents were there. Yeah, my oh parents my were like right behind Random them. People. So I like came in their car and I like tried texting my mom. I still didn't realize my service was off. I'm like, you fucking cunt. And they told me I was going to Utah to have like, uh, like they, they were gonna see if I was like addicted to anything. They were gonna have like a survey. They were gonna drug was there, panel me. Was blah, there something blah. Going, like, did you get in trouble or something? Like, I what failed was one the... drug test for weed. 
Oh, so they're like strict. My parents were super strict. Like my mom growing up, she would uh, she would call the police on me, have drug dogs come sniff the house. Like she did you do like did you do anything crazy to deserve that or literally weed? Like, it was it was weed. I, I did take ecstasy a few times in high school, but like I don't think more than like four or five. Did they they knew about it? No, they, they had no oh, clue. Okay. So okay. they yeah, they had no clue. But like growing up, you weren't like a problem, right? No, like I, a, a teenager, you weren't like a problem child, quote unquote, where your parents I mean, were I was like, a problem child to them, but like compared to everyone else, like I was usually <laughs> right. in bed by eleven PM. Like I would go to mm -hmm. a party and like when my mom picked me up, I'm like, all right, guys. Yeah. Damn. Guess it's time to go to bed because my mom would literally drive me and my friends to parties. Like she would make us drunchies after. It's like she knew about all the stuff yeah. going on. She like drove us. And but like she had such a problem with weed. And mm. it's like I smoked maybe once a month, mm -hmm. maybe. And yeah, I just was... happened to fail one drug test for weed. And she's mm -hmm. like, uh, th there's like a whole other story too where I had this therapist growing up and I wanted to stop going to this therapist because like she was like very toxic. So she was actually, so she found out that I wanted to stop going to her. So she was the one who put it in my mom's idea in her head to be like, your daughter's a problem. She wants to start, no. stop seeing me. Like she needs to go. So it was like all oh manipulated and curated so that I would have more of a reliance on this therapist because she wanted us all to have like beef. Um, So then I like got sent to this program where like, the first six weeks I was there, I wasn't allowed to speak to anyone. This was in Utah. This was in Utah. Like they totally lied about like they were just gonna evaluate me. And it's like anyone who evaluated me, like I have never had a drug addiction in my life. Yeah, like yeah. I was, I drank when I went out. I like did drugs occasionally, but like nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And like, I was a pretty fucking normal teen to like grow up in LA. Mm -hmm. um, Especially in LA, like that's not too bad. Like, yeah. You could get into a lot worse around here. Dude, well, a lot of my <laughs> friends came out with like Xanax addictions and stuff like that. Like I just like smoked weed occasionally and did yeah. like Molly occasionally. Like I was pretty okay. Like pretty I, docile. Yeah, pretty yeah. pretty tame. Like it pretty sounds tame. pretty tame Molly, for LA. Of... <laughs> yeah. So this this program though, like the first six weeks, like you weren't allowed to speak to anyone. Like you were only allowed to like speak if you were spoken to. You had to like raise your hand and go to the bathroom. Like you had no rights. So it's like you it, it was crazy. Like you had to earn your privileges. You couldn't talk to your parents for the first month. And they were like lying to my parents saying, uh, your, your daughter's in school. She's doing so great. She loves it here. If I would write letters to my parents, would I would get cited. I would get cited if I said anything negative about the program or anything that was actually going on. So if I try to tell my parents that like I wasn't in school, they would tear it up. I would get docked. I would lose a whole week of like the progress that I made. And um, like they made me like run laps. So I got like tendonitis, like all up and down, like my legs. Uh, they made us pull weeds with like uh, gloves that had holes in it. Like you had no contact with the outside world. And like you could only talk to your parents on a phone with like a therapist in the room. And then if you said anything negative about the program, boom, hung up. What were the other kids like? Um, Everyone was a little crazy. There was one girl who was there for like, a super bad porn addiction. Like she was in eighth grade, like porn, chatting. She would watch porn. No, she was she was on Chatterbait. She was on Chatterbait, like chatting with like grown men, and grown ass men, she was and in like eighth grade. She was in eighth grade, but like she told us that she was like lying to these people, saying she was eighteen. I'm sure. Yeah, but like so her her she was she had cust her parent grandparents had custody over her, so they sent her. Another girl was like court ordered to be there because she like overdosed and like she was forced mm. to be there. This other guy was like. He was just really into uh, like painkillers and stuff like okay. that. And this other guy was sent for like uh, tobacco. So like there was just us and it was. And where'd you, you had like a dorm or something? Oh, uh, there was like, I, I guess a dorm. I don't know. It's like, we were like in the woods. Like if you ran, there was like, you would actually die. Yeah, you died, no it was go. just like five of you? There was, th this was the first what? program though. This was the first program. So my parents figured out that I wasn't actually in school because they were asking for like school reports, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, when I got sent to this program, like I got a 3.9 GPA the year before. That's crazy. In, in high, high school? school. Like a if I ever did that, bro, my parents would have fucking threw me a party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like granted, I had to go to a private school and stuff because, but like, I, I worked for my grades and then, and then, yeah, I got sent. So then I got sent to this other rehab that was down the street. Like the first one was like super verbally abuse. Well, they were both abusive. I'd say both like in, both in Utah, both in Utah, they were down the street. So, um, <laughs> the first one is called Olympus Academy. And then the second one was called Diamond Ranch. And Olympus was actually an old Diamond Ranch Academy where like, I have friends who were at like the old DRA where they like, they would literally have the, the DRA, kids. That's what it is. Yeah. They would have the kids fight each other. DRA actually just. What do you mean? Got, like boxing or like. No, no, like fight fist, each other. Fist fight. Like the staff would like. Like dog fighting, that. like bet on yeah. it and shit. I, that's what I'd be doing. That'd be sick. 
Yeah, well, no, I mean, that's so fucked up. Actually, to have so staff do that, up, like my it's friend so was so fucked up. Yeah, it's so fucked up to have <laughs> that kind of like control over you. And uh, the second program that I got sent to, like we had school, blah blah blah. But like, you know what's crazy is one of the teachers who cited me. She cited me for having a negative attitude for being like, God, this place sucks. I got cited. She got arrested for having child pornography of her own adopted children. Her name is Jessica. Fuck Jessica. And her husband was also a teacher there. And her husband called the girls campus sluts and whores. Actually, all the all the staff called the girls campus sluts and whores. But like to have people who had child pornography of their own kids work at a troubled teen yeah. center to then tell it like to cite me for having a negative attitude. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. What happens after X amount of like citations? Um, You get sent to RFI and an RFI you it, it's kind of like detention like. I, I was in RFI once for three weeks because like basically when I was applying to colleges and by the way, because we had no access to the internet, we had no access to the mm -hmm. outside world. I had to miss all UC deadlines. So I missed all UC deadlines like for my, so I, I basically was like able to, I went to the University of Arizona, but mm -hmm. like once you miss a deadline, I even had like the principal of the school email them being like, sorry, she had no access to internet. Yeah. Please make an exception. And they were like, ah, no. no. So uh, that was a little, because how was I supposed to know? That's oh. so messed up. Yeah. So that fucked you up a little bit. Do you like hold resentment oh, for that a situation? A thousand percent. Like, do you th are you like cool with your parents or do you still kind of like talk about like? I mean, like, I I'd say I'm cool with my parents. Like my mom has apologized to me profusely oh, that, for that. That was my next question. I was going to say, do they still think that was the move or no. do they regret doing it too? I don't know if they regret doing it because like my mom was like psychotic growing up to the point that like she would make up scenarios in her head where I died. So in her head, like her sending me to rehab was like saving your life, saving my life. But it's like I didn't have a drug problem like that. Like granted, if maybe if maybe I was like a teenager nowadays, like, you know, with fentanyl going around, yeah. like maybe that actually would have saved my life. But also like, well, if, if you didn't actually have a drug problem. No, I didn't. Um, so then it, it didn't. She does like regret it now. I actually, my uh, my therapist is like, I want you to like sit down with your parents and make them watch the program with you because it's like they go into detail about like the abuse that a lot yep. of these programs put you through. And like, I didn't go through like the physical abuse per se. Like, yeah, pulling weeds with like broken gloves. But like no that one was fucking like hitting sucked. you and shit. But no one yeah, was hitting me. That's good. Yeah, but like the emotional <laughs> abuse was still there. Yeah. And it's still like, and, and they, that's they, like could be just as powerful. Yeah, the the way that the therapist would lie to you about stuff your parents were saying, and they would lie to mm -hmm. your parents, like they would try to cause tension so that your parents kept you there for longer, and that you and couldn't try to leave early. Shit. Yeah, it was, and then I like caught so my therapist lying so many times, and I'm like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. He's like, Well, I'm going to tell your parents that you're like, yeah. not. Shouldn't the goal be get you out of therapy? No, that, but, but it's, I'm saying, shouldn't it be? Yeah. So it, I actually I've been talking to my therapist about this a lot recently because my parents you got a good one now, though, right? Oh, I have such All a right. good one. But like <laughs> I they paid over like one hundred thousand dollars for me to be there when I didn't need to be there. You know, could have done something else with a hundred. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like now when my parents spend money on me, it's like it's almost like there is still resentment. You know, I don't feel like super grateful for the money that yeah. they spend on me when they do spend money because I'm like, you guys literally blew a hundred thousand yeah. dollars for a rehab i didn't need like that's crazy my dad like never wanted to send me in the first mm -hmm. place i guess but like i have other issues with him okay. do you want and, your own kids huh do you want your own no. kids no kids at all no okay. i just so, i want um so you can't send them to any camps if you don't have any kids no but also if any of my friends send their kids to camps you, like you automatic save their kid huh you're gonna go save the kid well i think i would unfriend <laughs> them like if they knew what i went through it's like i still have nightmares like at least a few times a month of like being yeah. kidnapped and like not knowing where i am and it's like in my dreams i'm screaming like i'm 26 like yeah, you guys can't so hold scary. me here and um what's crazy is that kids who went to my rehab and then went to jail said that jail is easier than the rehab is you have more rights in jail than you I did mean, in rehab well probably because you weren't 18 either yeah right? or, well the, but the, jail you shouldn't have known i don't know that's crazy the rehabs you like they have 49 percent custody over you and your parents have 51 percent custody so it's like they're able to do a lot a to lot. you and like if you're in states like Utah, they're, they're parent right states where they, they kind of allow more emotional abuse and stuff like that than like any other, like you yeah. couldn't do that in California. Uh -huh. In California, you get like held accountable. Mm -hmm. But Utah, you know, it's the land of the Mormons. The Mormons don't give a fuck about yeah. people's individual rights, honestly. Yeah. Do you think like, so that's great. That's like, that's a lot of trauma right there. That's yeah. a fucking, that's a, that's a, 
Well, that's uh, a heart full of. Yeah, it's also interesting because uh, I, I've been reading up also because it's like autism does run in my family, but yeah. also if you have a lot of trauma and like PTSD, it could, it could be like get, it, not, it gives you like, like symptoms wrong. of yeah, like yeah. autism or that like other sense. stuff. Yeah, I feel like like strong mental abuse could fuck up your mental. Like, yeah, for sure. But a really funny story is when I was in high school. So my mom, my mom bought this like chair, right, to like mm -hmm. drug test me in. Like the first time that she drug tested me, I remember like peeing half in it. And like filling the rest of toilet water, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I smoked weed like a few weeks ago. Like, yeah, what if it shows it up? Yeah, yeah. So I watered it down. My mom wanted to prove a point that like it wasn't actually my pee. So she drank it. She drank it to prove a point. Either way, even if there wasn't pee in there and there was half of it was my pee. The other half was toilet water that she decided to drink to prove a point. And she remembers this and asked me because I started doing stand up comedy. She's like, are you going to talk about this in your stand up? And I said, yep. absolutely. The fuck yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Are you kidding? That's and the <laughs> best. That's giving content to you. Yeah, that's crazy. So she your mom's a savage kind of. Oh, she's like a full blown a psychopath. Like she used to like child lock the car and like bring. I remember she, one time she child locked the car after uh, picking it from high school and like wouldn't tell me where I was going. And I'm like, this again, awesome. I like, what's, what's, what is, what mm -hmm. is it gonna be now? So she drove me to like a local rehab. They like drug tested me there and mm -hmm. they like, they did like a whole psych evaluation and they said, your daughter's anxiously depressed, but a lot of it sounds like it's coming from you. Yeah, and my mom was like, like nope, we need to go to another place. They're wrong. <laughs> it's gonna say what we want to Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> wrong, but Next. of course, like these, these rehabs in Utah, the ones that don't want you to actually get better because they want the money, they're like, it's completely your daughter's fault. So like, mm. I remember they would tell me stuff like, you're the reason that your parents have issues. You're the reason that like mm. your brother holds resentment, your mom holds resentment, like everything. And like, that's a problem in your parents' life is your fault. Mm. And they would try to tell me the stuff and it's like, you would just go numb. I have a question. Yeah. So. The reason why we were talking about this story is because you were talking about like things that have affected you and your trauma and how it's like changed your personality and like how you've been. Uh huh. Have you ever dug deep into like your mom's parents and like seen how she grew up and maybe like wh oh, why mom? she is like, do you think the way she acts is a result of something that had happened to her? I have her a lot up? of empathy for my mom because like, so her you dad. Get what I'm saying? Huh? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, no, yeah. no. I told. My mom's childhood was really fucked up. So my grandpa was in the CIA, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's for sure killed a bunch of people. He's for sure, he's done some fucked up shit. It's yeah. actually crazy. I saw a psychic. She's like, did you know like your grandpa like killed and raped people? And I'm like, oh, actually rape? I did. Wait, what is yeah. rape? What are people in the CIA? Said, huh? You were Who's raping, raping in the CIA? My grandpa. Who, you just said he was raping people. Yeah, well that's well that's what the psychic said. I know about the killing. I didn't okay, know about so the we're not, that, that's the not, psychic that's not said positive. it. So we don't have proof. We don't have proof of that we one. We don't so have proof. We won't bust your grandpa's name right at this moment. Well, he's dead, <laughs> so who cares? Okay. All yeah. Right. <laughs> who is but, he supposedly raping? Uh, people in Mexico, which he actually does have a family, uh, like a secret family in Mexico. Mm. Your relatives in Mexico have yeah. Mexican, so it's yeah. possible. Well, I'm not, but like uh, I'm saying your kids. I mean, like your cousins are. Yeah. Have, or your, I guess, I don't know what they are. What I, I've never your met aunts, them. Your my, aunts and uncles. I guess my be, mom. My mom just found out she even had half siblings like a few years ago. But my grandpa with like the PTSD he went through, he'd like get very drunk and he'd get very violent with both my mom and my grandma. And like my mom is like a toddler was having to like chase him around with a knife so he would like not kill my grandma. So it's like I understand where her head is at, where she mm -hmm. I think she had to like make up scenarios in her head to escape. Like mm -hmm. she she couldn't live in reality because living in reality that you were in like constant fear of your life for like getting abused. I, I understand why she had to make up this like fake shit in her head. And it's like dealing with that kind of trauma, like that's hard. Like even dealing with the trauma I mm -hmm. went through and like nothing I went through was as much as that. Like yeah. it's like, it's a lot of work and it's super. Yeah. I mean, the reason why yeah. I asked that is because like I when I asked you, I was like, do you hold like some resentment and yeah. whatever? Because my up upbringing was kind of weird. My mom was in trouble a lot. Like she was, she would, like she was in jail like sometimes when I was yeah. not a cop. And that's like a little fuck. Like, I don't know. I've seen, like I've seen her get hit by her boyfriend. Like she would, uh -huh. she, she's been into, into some shit. And I would think sometimes like, like, damn, I wish it would be like a little more normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then the older and older I get, I was talking about this the other day. You almost find like, I don't know how old your parents were when they started to have kids, but I'm sure kind of young. Like. In their thirties. You know? Okay. So they're, they're, a little older, but still yeah. like my parents are like our, our age right now, like 26, 27. And like growing up, like you look at them like, oh shit, they know everything you got to listen. You know what I mean? They know, uh -huh. And then when you start to get our age, you're like, okay, they didn't really know shit. So it's like, yeah. give them a little wiggle. Like, you know, like, so you have that, that's a crazy bizarre story. Uh -huh. And, and like, 
I can't tell you how to feel about like you yeah, that, yeah. that like I've never been through that so like I don't know but yeah. little or things I, I see myself like like damn they did that then I see myself thinking like okay they aren't perfect like and I'm glad I can not like I don't know gave me a little yeah like do you do you attribute your traumas to some of your success and oh your a thousand career? percent like I wouldn't change what I went through at all I think it that made, it made you who you are oh yeah I think the trauma makes me like so much funnier than I could have been if I was just like like you ever talk to someone that like they had like a a picture perfect childhood and you're like oh wow like you're not funny at all yeah you're mm -hmm. so fucking boring. that is true comedians always have some fucked up <laughs> shit because that's what, it's like their drama is what makes other people which is kind of exactly it's kind of that's kind of like the people that are making everyone else laugh yeah. aren't the ones laughing inside most of the time self-deprecating humor is like mm -hmm. the humor mm -hmm. i know like i wouldn't change my childhood for the world i think like some of the resentment comes from the fact that like i work so hard on myself it's like i go to life coaching like i go to therapy like i do so much work on myself mm -hmm. and like seeing my parents not put in that kind of effort for themselves yeah. and it's like they continue to like cross boundaries they continue to do stuff so it's like i remember i i had my dad blocked for i think two years until Damn. he I are they together him, your mom and your dad yeah they are but i told my dad that i would unblock him the minute he started going to therapy to at least learn how to communicate with me better like maybe you don't have to work on your own shit but you have to learn how to communicate with me yeah. i just set that boundary with my mom too i was like i won't talk to you until you actually try to start like communicating with me better because mm -hmm. it's like there's only so many times my mom can comment yeah. about like how much i eat my weight blah 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 like i didn't eat she this. does it yeah Damn. yeah she she's I had an eating disorder starting in sixth grade because of that. She knew and like would still make comments about that. So now I'm like putting my foot down because I'm like, you need to like mm -hmm. actually work on your shit. See that that is hard for me. Like, yeah, I don't think I don't know if I'd ever be in a place where I could like try to tell my parents what's you know what I mean? Like, I feel like setting boundaries is honestly one of the hardest, like mm -hmm. even because like my parents didn't let me set boundaries growing up. So even when I send like a risky text message, like my whole body will start shaking. Really? Like it's so hard for me. But like, like it's yeah. something I'm learning how to do in my like mid twenties. Do they know you do like adult content? And stuff? Oh yeah. So do you want to know why I blocked my dad? Uh oh. Why'd you block your dad? <laughs> okay. This actually. Okay. This is a funny story. So someone emailed my dad uh, from my church, and this girl who emailed my dad from my church growing up, she she was like, "I'm one of uh, your daughter's friends." Blah blah blah. So this girl was like, "So my dad died, like, uh, and." I know he'd be so disappointed like doing this kind of work. She like looked at my OnlyFans, looked at my podcast, like listened to my podcast to send everything to my dad. You know who this girl was? Her now husband and they now have a kid together, but he was like hitting on me on Snapchat while they were together. I'm like, did you know? Or is this just kind of like karmic revenge that like you didn't know when you just happened to do this, but like your now husband was trying to cheat on you with me. Either way. So she tried to expose you, she was like salty? I, I don't know, like she was either salty or didn't know and just it, did it out and uh, or she just didn't know and did it because she felt self righteous as like a Christian, yeah. you know. Either way, are you religious now? No, <laughs> yeah. Either way, your husband did try Christian. to hit on me, huh? Yeah, I grew up pretty Christian. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's different it's, now. I I'm very against Christianity now, but You're very against it. Yeah, I'm very anti religion. Mm -hmm. I do think this might be a controversial opinion, but mm -hmm. like. If you believe in organized religion and what organized religion stands for, I feel like you just have less brain cells. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion. I think a lot of the time people, I mean, that's, 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 that, that I could think that also. Yeah. But I, I like to think that people need like something to hold on to. You know what I mean? Need, need something some to make them feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And whatever works. Like I'm a big I'm spiritual. believer in placebo, you know, like placebo yeah. effects. Like, like I believe your human brain can really like, like if you believe, if I gave you a pen, I told you this is a Zant like or something, like uh -huh. you would start to feel a little, even if it was nothing, you know what I yeah. mean? You might be like, okay. That's just the whole basis it, of manifesting. So I'm saying like people kind of, yeah, manifesting. Manifesting yeah. works, I think it, it works. If you think about it, talk about it, work towards it, fucking that yeah. if you just manifest manifest Dude, it'll work i've been like writing in a journal like my money's going up blah 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 i'm mm -hmm. making like 20k more this month than my previous months like that's crazy how it works you're rich <laughs> yeah rich where do you where, <laughs> what go ahead oh but i was gonna the... finish this a story oh, yeah, about my dad that, so my dad that. was texting me like you I made forgot. an only fans blah 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 i was like you need to drop this right now like you i'm setting a boundary if you care about a relationship at all you're gonna drop this why does my dad look up daddy deals leaks goes on reddit sees a picture of me spread eagle sees a picture of me spread eagle decides to send me a screenshot of that to be like you're not ashamed of this and like this is one of the jokes i do in my stand-up set but i'm like there's nothing more patriotic because my dad's a big trumper like little trumpster but there's nothing more patriotic than sending your daughter a screenshot of her spread eagle like 
nothing more patriotic, right? Oh my <laughs> Gotta God. Gotta say, <laughs> I'm an American. And then that's why you blocked him. Yeah, that's why so I blocked him. So when he said that, years. you blocked, did you respond to the picture or did you just block like, him? I was like, you just, you just crossed a boundary. So you're going to be blocked till you go to therapy. And then I literally blocked yeah. him until you did something. But yeah, like who in their right mind thinks, someone told me that my daughter's naked on the internet. Last thing I would do is go look for it. Yeah. Last that was thing the I would first do is go. thing he did. <laughs> so your mom drinks pee. Yeah, my mom drinks pee and my and dad, dad sends me screen. And you know what's funny is that my mom told me, she was like, you know, your dad was like asking his friends, like, did I do anything wrong in this conversation? So he was showing his friends a conversation to be like, did I do anything wrong? And like, she didn't tell me if he deleted the picture or not, but I'm assuming- His friends are like, wait, let me see. Yeah, yeah, wait, let me see that again. What's, what's let her? me see what she's saying. Maybe, I yeah. don't know, I have to read the thread. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, listen, he could have had the common sense to delete it, but mm -hmm. I don't think most old people know how to delete no. conversations like that, so mm -hmm. no. What type of content is that? You said you've been making a lot more money since you've been manifesting. Things. Yeah, yeah. What's the type of content? What's your bread and butter? Like, what's the thing you're like, okay, I does mean, it change or is it? Kind of, so everyone always asks me for boy girl content, but I mm -hmm. haven't hooked up with a man in over two and a half years. We, we read that. I was yeah. shy. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Celibate was the word you celibate. used. That's some self-control. Celibate, celibate from pain. Celibate from pain. Is it like a, like you're attracted to guys and you like dick still and you oh, just. Oh, I love dick. Okay. So it's like a, what's the, you're being very. What's the word? I want to be self like control. I, yeah, self control. Yeah, I have a lot of self control. I have a. I don't really drink alcohol. I even don't super do drugs anymore, or like I don't really do mushrooms anymore. I don't drink caffeine. Like I, I met you. Sugar. We did mushrooms together the first yeah. time. I don't know if you remember. I do. I give everyone mushrooms. <laughs> We're filming. Bro, well, right, I'll tell this story. Yeah. This is funny. So Ryan Palano, yeah. he's actually fucking been on this show three times. He's always <laughs> running in and out, sitting down. He's yeah. like, he's been on this. Yeah, he's always around. Um, invited me. He was like, yo. Didn't even say much. He was like, this is OFTV show. It's just a little party get together. Like they told me bring some people. And I'm sure that's what he told you too, right? Like, I, or did I, well, you know the situation? Invited. Oh, oh so even, they invited you. Yeah, they invited me. I, oh, didn't, I didn't know, know that Ryan was even going to be oh, there. Oh my God. Okay, so you came and it was like, you're right. So I just assumed he yeah. invited you. I didn't ask much deeper. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, cause you guys were like, oh, you guys were like right away. Oh shit. So I was like, oh, yeah. maybe he, because he invited me. So I was uh -huh. like, oh, I don't know. We get there, bro. Full blown reality show being filmed. Like yeah. cameras everywhere doing interviews. You have to sign like waivers and shit. Uh -huh. They're like asking. So he walks up. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Joey. He's like, Ryan's like, this is deals, whatever. She's like, here. She's like, you want to take shrooms with us? I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. So that we're here for, I don't know, a few hours. And uh -huh. we're just like, holy shit, filming a reality show. Like, oh, Are my mushrooms good? Bro, vibes. I was like, yo. <laughs> yeah. I'm team you. <laughs> I was like, this is lit. Ryan's like, isn't she the best? Yeah. First the amount of times I give out like free filmed. mushrooms. It's so funny too. I was so tired that day. And like the times after that, that I met Ryan, he's like, I thought you were just like this quiet little girl. Like yeah, I didn't yeah. know that you talk this much. Wait, and I'm was like, that your first day meeting him? That was my first day meeting him. We had only messaged on Instagram Oh, okay. So that. you have like, no, you knew of each other. Yeah, it wasn't we knew just of like, each other. Okay. He wanted me to like fly out for his podcast and mm -hmm. stuff. But like, I, again, I was just getting off like the mold poisoning pills. My hormones mm -hmm. were all fucked up. I'm like, I can't see myself traveling. Like I just like had no energy all day, every day. Yeah. So I like mean, that is a good excuse. Yeah, like, it was understandable. Yeah. Okay. Twenty. What was it? Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Twenty twenty two was the year of mm -hmm. like not being sick anymore, or like being super go. sick and then not being sick anymore. That's usually how it goes, right? You get real, real sick, and then your body gets stronger from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get more resilient, but it like it takes such mm -hmm. a long time to not get sick anymore. Like people really underestimate because it's like you want to push your body and like the more yeah. you push your body, the longer it takes to get better. Like you really just need to relax. Yeah, and, relax. Like, you get let sick. it recharge. Yeah. How do you get away with uh, putting a lot of your videos on Instagram? Like I see a lot of your Instagram videos. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. How is this not getting flagged? Like uh, for like eyes bouncing on it, like oh, yeah. bare, but kind of nipple, like kind of see your nipples do something, right? Like a booty yeah. bounce. Like how does that not like get to get your Instagram deleted? Um, Last guest we had did a lot less than that, and she had her Instagram deleted. So I have a backup account that I post everything on, and mm -hmm. then I invite my main as a collaborator. So that account stays shadow banned, but my main isn't because I'm not posting it from my main account, and it's. That's Who my taught strategy. you that? Pro tip. Or no you learned did. it. I'm just smart. Mm. Yeah, it's a 3.9 GPA. Yeah. Marketing major. I was a marketing major at Eller School of Business. No way. Not that I learned a whole lot, but like marketing yeah, you don't and math just school, comes right? to me. Yeah, you're good at it. You're, yeah. That's 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 a great scheme. Yeah. You might so need to use that one. I've taught, I've taught that to a lot of people because if you want to post your risky shit. like And then what? They'll ban the account that posted it, not collabed with it? Yeah. Like if, if I get in trouble, it's only on the backup account. I don't Genius. get in trouble on I should make a backup. Yeah, exactly. 
I, I literally have like four different backup accounts because I'm like, one of my backups, I still want it to not mm -hmm. be shadow banned because yeah. that one has like 100,000. My main has like 900 something. And then like my, one of my backup accounts has like 10,000. The one that I post like all my ass shots from. Yeah, and then yeah. I tried another one just to see like how, how soon will this one get shadow banned? It was pretty immediate, but either way, I just wanted to, you know, try it out. Yeah. So yeah. So your content is mostly solo right now or are you collaborate? with I do a lot girl? of girl, girl. Cause, uh, and you're f like, I mean, what constitute as like fucking a girl? I mean, I eat pussy. Is that, but that means you fuck them, I mean? Yeah. Like once you eat the pussy, you fucking them. Yeah. If you finger each other, you're not fucking them. I mean, I think fingering, I feel like for a girl, girl, like the, the term fucking is just a lot more like wider range. Hooked, yeah, I was gonna like, say, what, what about for a guy? If a guy eats a girl out, they're not fucking. No, they're no, not fucking. Mm -hmm. No, but it's just like, I don't know. I guess it's just different because it's like, I feel like with girls, I mean, like, I don't know, like we fuck mm -hmm. each other with dildos, like we'll eat each other out. Like that, I feel like that's just like fucking mm -hmm. a girl, but like guys, if a guy like, but then again, like I had an opportunity earlier, uh, it was like in July of last year, like I had like a celibate sleepover, this guy where we're making out and he like wanted to go down on me. He's like, you don't, we don't have to fuck. We don't. And I was like, no, like straight up like that is just going to be, that's not a line. Where did you go beat cross. off in the bathroom? Huh? Where did you go beat off and like. I mean, I think he does. He he gets turned on by giving. Like that was his thing. Like he gets very turned on by giving. But I'm like, that's just still too I, much. Yeah. What, what is the reason? I am waiting to like be in love. So it's you're like, what's the word for it? When pants? Oh no 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 not pansexual. What's it called when you're bisexual? Demi, demi Wait, what's, what's demisexual? It called? Like when you're into somebody for know. their personality. Like you you want it like they're all fake. You're you're over. You're not you're not really attracted to people you don't really want to fuck someone that you just find physically attractive no you wanna, not like, at all like you want to find someone that you've the inside and out yeah like, exactly i'm so attracted fuck, to like personalities because like i have no clue i th it might be pan i heard pansexual that though. sounds like everybody yeah everything. that's a, pansexual sounds like everybody oh, everyth I, I think pansexual is everything we're so bad okay. this is, like, we're like we have yeah. no idea what is we're talking a, about yeah <laughs> we're all fucking stupid <laughs> 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 i learned all my terms off tiktok i'm like oh that no but the people who were like everyone's a narcissist after they watch like one stupid tiktok video i'm like dude mm -hmm. you don't understand how trauma works because like trauma can like yeah. look like narcissistic traits but it's like all the trauma response do you like, think your screen personality and your in your in-person personality are a lot different or do you think they're very parallel I think they're the same mm -hmm. i think i mean like i i will say that sometimes my on-screen personality might be a little like more sexual than i am in person because yeah. i feel like when you meet me in person i don't give off very like yeah. sexual vibes at all but like but even in my i mean i feel like i don't come off like other than like my butt always be, being in people's faces like i don't think i come off as like this <laughs> o overly sexualized no. person it's mm -mm. just like it's almost just like flirty like <laughs> here's my butt yeah. tee -hee. but i do feel like that's how i am in real like, life it wouldn't too. have been like meet you and been like oh she's a adult creator like you yeah. know what i mean it's not pin you as that like people don't um, think about sometimes. you that right do I they mean, think that right away I like mean, when I first met you, I didn't think that, but then I learned pretty quick. I think. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's her ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, she's working with something. Over yeah, <laughs> all of my friends who like I've known since like high school or college, or not all of them, but a lot of them are like, I've had to mute your account because I will just like be at work yeah. opening my Instagram, Shaking your ass. ass, and they'll like throw their phone, and everyone is like, do you have like a porn addiction? They're like, no, this yeah. is my good friend Adelia. <laughs> like, I swear I'm not addicted <laughs> We're to porn. Besties, like, your con her whole feed is just like yeah. all kind of your backup accounts. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, shit. <laughs> do you have a favorite collab or scene that you've done? I literally just filmed one that was one of my favorite scenes because it's like, even with girls, like there are some girls that I think are super, super hot, but it's like I collab with them and it's just like, I feel a lot more comfortable like hooking up with girls who I've known for a really long mm -hmm. time. Cause like, I just really like that comfortability in our friendship where it's like, I can eat your pussy. You don't have to be scared about like how I look, what I'm doing, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, so. It's like having a boyfriend or something. Huh? It's like having a boyfriend. Yeah. But it's just a really good girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. So it's like when I, when I hook up with like, I hooked up with my friend uh, Katie on Monday and it was like one of my favorite scenes I've ever done. Like I scored it twice and like I made her come and it's like also just like having that connection with someone. And it's mm -hmm. like, it was like, I don't say this for everybody, but I was very turned on by turning her on. And I feel like that doesn't happen mm -hmm. unless I have Who's, a connection with someone. Creator? You said, you said her first uh, It's like Katie, Katie, uh, Toy Crazy Katie or something on Instagram, oh, yeah. if you know who that I'm is. I'm gonna have to look. Now yeah. you got me interested. You got me yeah. interested. But it was it was just like such like a fun, sensual scene that like I I and she's like very, very bad. She's like very pan. Who and, like, like shot it? Uh just her phones. Okay, so you guys do it. There's no like camera. Guys. No. Do you do scenes like that often or no? Like someone's there filming. 
Um, I've done it. Like I've had like some of my friends' partners like film it for us. But like I feel like usually the iPhone vibes, like no one's going to Do my better. OnlyFans. Go being like, I want a whole high production thing. They're like, what is Deals doing in her free time? Like, they want to know. They want, like, what... they, they want to think you did it this morning. Like, not yeah, like exactly. weeks ago with a photo shoot in a studio. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, because like, I mean, honestly, a lot of my friends who are porn stars, like, I'm looking at some of their OnlyFans mm-hmm. numbers and like, I'd say majority of them are making like less than 10K yeah. a month. And I feel like 10K might be a lot for an average person, but to literally be shooting like mainstream porn that you make <sighs> no residuals off of and then making like less than 10K a month. I just that's crazy and that's why a lot of them escort Mm -hmm. which like great for them you're escorting but it's like what about like the long-term financial Mm -hmm. goals like what happens when you don't want to shoot porn anymore like how are you gonna like how does that connection how does the whole escorting thing work like so I know that like there's obviously like there's like prostitutes on like a website but your friends aren't that's not what you're talking about I, they're okay. not like order them for five four hundred dollars and then like kind of, it, they're, but they're like prestigious websites so it's like you need like background checks and stuff like that mm-hmm. to be able to even hire escorts i forgot like the name of these escort sites but probably for the best because i don't want everyone to like be able to look at my friends and like hire them but um uh, <laughs> <You laughs> not doing a business though yeah yeah <laughs> support them from, support the homies but and then what they find them they just find people on the site and they get yeah. linked up pretty much yeah like uh the rates go from anywhere like if you're a lesser known porn star it's like maybe like a thousand dollars if you're a well-known porn star it might go up to five thousand or something like that mm-hmm. but i'm for still what, like, like dinner and fuck or, something? or like pretty much yeah but i'm like i've had customs go for like two three four thousand dollars i'm like that is way better than yeah i like to me i just like i really want to like teach some of these girls marketing like i i'm <laughs> they, all got, they got the business end off yeah up. <laughs> it's like i'm all for escrow i'm all for sex work i just like want these girls like not cheap in their value like be smart about it like you can make so much more money like but like even if it's an mm-hmm. online persona like put this online persona where it's like you're not just the sex worker you know mm-hmm. have these like a uh, men like relate to you in a way where it's like they want to spend more money because they don't just look at you yeah. as like a sex object and i think they that's something relate. i've they done wanna, yeah. very good for myself because mm-hmm. it's like my instagram engagement might not be the best like my social media presence not be the not <laughs> you my, do all right yeah. I, I do all right. Model. <laughs> <laughs> but like i i think i make a lot more on only fans than other people because like shit, people yeah. know me mm-hmm, like these mm-hmm. subs are like i watch your podcast yeah, like yeah. i listen to you like they're like they so how you. long is it since you've been celibate like even at avn i got stopped like five yeah, times yeah. to be like so is this an act and i'm like no it really is that, uh, it'd be cool if it was that's like, it that people know that yeah. and they're asking you that's so cool. yeah but like i just think a lot more girls like like it would be so beneficial if they spent that effort into like making even if it's mm-hmm. a fake online persona to like get these men to spend yeah. more money mm-hmm. Because they will. You think prostitution should be legal? In our a thousand country? percent. I, I actually, agree. Did you, I agree. Did you see my video on Instagram? No. Oh, I made one that's like, if I was president, I'm like, the first thing I would do is make all kind of sex work legalized. Yep. And like, I would too. There's like, I, oh God, I made like a seven minute video because I want drugs to be legalized. I want mm-hmm. prostitution to be legalized because when you make things illegal, like abortions, blah, 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 like you only stop it from being done safely. Like, yeah, seriously. How many kids are dying a day from right. fentanyl overdoses? How many women are dying because their pimps are like, you know, beating them. Beating or, them or up. they're getting raped or, yeah. or STDs or uh-huh. like, cause the, the way I think about it is like, it's almost like a little deeper, but like when weed, you know what I mean? Weed, everyone's like, don't legalize, legalize it, sell it in stores, tax yeah. it, regulate it. Then and guess then what? Everyone makes money. Roads, like, porn or not porn prostitution. Yeah. If you legalize it, the safety of the women or men, whoever wants yeah. to be a prostitute, a lot safer. So much safer. Probably get STD tested regularly. Uh, you, it's it's it, either you the, have to use protection or you need like a test that day, mm-hmm. something like that. Like no one's getting raped or beat or yeah. stolen or abducted because there, it's what, legal human and trafficking I, uh-huh. is because it's illegal and you buy people and then they're pro- like if you made it legal, they'd probably cut a lot of that out. And the U.S. Human always wants to complain about like illegal immigrants or like uh, mm-hmm. people on the border, the cartel, blah, blah, blah. Imagine yeah. if we just like... M- created all of this stuff in the u.s like mm-hmm. maybe not like everything but like we legalize weed we legalize germs like maybe like legalize opiates or like whatever mm-hmm. these kids are doing that they're constantly overdosing yeah. on or even make like safer options than xanax that might yeah. be like a little bit less addictive like do you really think that because kids are going to do it anyways mm-hmm. like do you really want all these kids overdosing on fentanyl just to like save your stupid fucking image that yeah. like only appeals to boomers like yeah. anyone that's our age says like let's legalize drugs let's legalize this kind of stuff unless there's some kind of like andrew tate yeah all right loser virgin like I don't virgin know. loser that yeah. has like some strong opinion trying to go viral like yeah no i, mean, I, I feel all, that none of them get pussy who say that kind nah, of shit seriously yeah but like, no, going back to the prostitution thing i saw uh-huh. this little clip um on joe rogan and yeah. it really like explained it to me like 
prostitution is like natural like wanting to like like women having it's i just say it like this because more often than not i feel like it's a woman and a man like mm -hmm. women kind of hold the sexual power in the yeah you know what i, I, mean? I, like I don't it's know if women would ever pay for a prostitute unless exactly. it's like for the, like a lot of women mm -hmm. would rather pay an escort to be mm -hmm. like in a threesome to be a uniform yeah, 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 yeah. and like have mm -hmm. their friends because mm -hmm. it's just like then they're a professional and like whatever but yeah. anyways yeah, no, yeah so i'm saying it's pretty natural like to want that for a male species to want that from female yeah. and they'll pretty much like almost do anything to mm -hmm. get that like maybe before food or what like yeah. you know, when they get to that point so what joe rogan said the scientists did a a um test uh -huh. with these orangutans and they taught them kind of like the value of money say they had these like yellow or red coins mm -hmm. and they were like a coin equals a banana and they taught them for yeah. weeks and weeks so the the chimps started to understand okay coin get food that's worth something. They understood yeah, yeah. money, which is pretty cool. It took like two weeks. All of the male chimps were uh -huh. starving and giving all their coins to the to female females. chimps to <laughs> fuck them. And the female chimps were eating good fat. Yeah. And the male chimps were literally getting their coins <laughs> and giving them the, to, and the females learn, hold off and then get a coin and then let them do it. Like, yeah. and it was like, holy shit. So like, we're fucking monkey. Like we're 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 primate. We're it's fucking like, monkeys too. Yeah, like, it's actually crazy because Cleopatra. Like, if you look at the way that she rose to power, it was like manipulating all these men with sex. Like, I don't know much about her, but I like history and shit. Yeah, so like uh, Cleopatra. Like, I, I don't I don't remember the exact specifics, but mm -hmm. like Cleopatra rose to like her uh, her power mm -hmm. by like. She rose with sex, like yeah. she she would fuck these men, whatever. Like she would have like all of these orgies. At least if I'm remembering correctly, like mm -hmm. don't hold me to this, but I'm sure. Yeah, but like that's how she rose to power, and it's actually crazy because I looked up like the origins of like mm -hmm. when like women first started like shaving like head to toe. It was actually like around the time of Cleopatra because really? they would be having these orgies, so they'd have like these straight blades, just be like like. Uh, shaving their whole body yeah. like to have these like orgies and like sex was never like until Christianity really mm -hmm. came around like sex was not demonized the way yeah. it is like it shouldn't be demonized like no. the reason that I'm like personally celibate from men at least is because mm -hmm. like women respect you men don't yeah. like if you fuck a woman I think a lot of the time you become closer afterwards yeah. like when you fuck, fuck a man like uh, it's something that happens with like the post not clarity he like there's just like such That's a separation a real thing. That's oh a real I know thing. it's a do real you, thing do girls get that do you get like post cum clarity Sometimes, yeah. It, you're it like, kinda, holy fuck, I was just horny. Like, yeah, it kind of depends because, like, there are some women that after I hook up with them, I'm just like, oh my god, I want to do this again. Like, I want to be best friends with you, blah blah blah. But like, for, for there are also some women that I hook up mm -hmm. with that I'm like, I'm good with just this. Is one there guys? Is there guys that you're like? I have almost like, thrown oh, up really, after like, fucking so, guys. Really? Like, yeah. Uh, but but you didn't feel that way before. You knew going into it, like. Um, I guess it kind of depends. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like. And, and was your last one so bad that you had to go celibate for two years? Pretty much. Really? I mean, he he was like okay. At, like I mean, he Poor his fuck. his dick was really good and stuff. It was just like that's like almost like turning your girl lesbian. You know, and you like break up with yeah. your girl and she goes lesbian. Yeah, it's like damn, rough. you ruined it. So it was just like the lack of respecting my boundaries that mm -hmm. like I was just like this is the thing. Like men don't respect you. And I remember like we we made a sex tape. We honestly made a few sex tapes and like uh the first time that we had sex like he said that he would do it for free blah 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 afterwards he's like no like you need to pay me Shut for this up. for the sex tape to be able to post it i was like what the fuck so then i i like paid him so i could get the sex tape and then he's like okay this next time we'll do it for free and then after we filmed again he was like actually like you need to pay me and i started this getting... is your boyfriend or this no no, is no. Just it, it was oh. someone that i went to high school and college with but uh but anyways like we were honestly really good friends for a long fucking time and mm -hmm. I, I just, I was getting all pissed because I'm like, okay, like it would have been different if we had a conversation beforehand and like you communicated, like, I want you to pay me for this. Like, you know, I'm putting in my time, but to manipulate and me and then afterwards, like change your mind and then like hold the tape over my head. Like I was not okay with Is that. He like a creator? Like a big, like. No, he's not a creator. Oh. He, he's just someone I went to high school and college with. So no face, just dick or. Face? Yeah, it was just, it was just his dick pretty much. Oh, okay. And like, but then. You just tell him you don't get paid for that. Yeah, but it was just Say you're like, welcome. Exactly, because right? <laughs> he knew I wouldn't have fucked him if it wasn't for that. He uh, knew I wouldn't have. And like, but then he started to say like, well, I didn't know you wanted to date me when I started getting upset about paying him. And I'm like, there is no universe that I would <laughs> ever want to date you. Shit. There is like not a single planet. <laughs> like this man, this man is like pasty white, okay? The one that I made a sex tape with. And like, okay, so he was the last guy I had sex with, but I think I blew a different guy like a week or two after that. And like this other guy that I blew was black. 
And then I like sent that out on my OnlyFans. This and like you know how you have the the free preview. So I did like a free mm -hmm. preview, like blurred out the dick, but like you could obviously tell that was, black. was black. This guy yeah. who's pasty white sends me a screenshot being like, I don't remember making this. I'm like, are you stupid? Like, I don't know how many brain cells you lost, but like- Was he like being facetious no, or no, he was being dead no, ass? No, he, he was dead ass, but like he takes like a lot of Xanax, like he uh, drinks a lot, like he's- con But I'm like, like- bro, you don't have a black dick? Yeah, like what? You wish. <laughs> yeah, well, no, his, his dick is pretty big, but like- Okay. It's, it's pretty big, go. but yeah, after that, like- See, you're an honest girl. You're talking all this shit on this guy and you're like, you know what? Yeah, actually, it's a big Credit where credit is due. Well, I like right? that. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Like, I mean, I, I squared it. Nothing to do with him because I was all, I was doing all the. I mean, it had to do with his dick, but I was doing all the work <laughs> yeah, writing you were and doing stuff. The motion and shit. Like, because he you was like much trying had to film. A dildo. But I'm like, damn, like his dick did make me squirt. But like, other than that, like he, <laughs> there was nothing he did that made me come. It wasn't like he was like had really good yeah, finger yeah, yeah. game or like really good dick game. That was all me. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was you were just like, like using a dildo. No, yeah, but yeah. like there were like a few things that he did. Like like he would say that he was filming the whole time that I was blowing him and he would mm -hmm. be filming in like 30 second increments and be like, no, you were only blowing me for like two minutes. Just kind of like lying and like being manipulative. He spit in my mouth like like we didn't talk about that. He had just eaten like French onion soup. Like imagine <laughs> having French onion soup spit in your mouth and like it was just disgusting. And then one time he like Yo, before shooting a porn scene, I don't know if I can pick a worse meal. Yeah. French onion soup. It just like he had like no fucking respect for me as a human man. Obviously you know? not. If he and went like, and ate French onion soup and then spit in your mouth, that's like on purpose. Yeah. And then he came in my mouth after I specifically told him not to. And this is a guy <laughs> who drank and did a lot of drugs. Okay. Dude, like it, it tasted nasty, like huh? battery acid. I threw up in a sink. Okay. I I threw up in a sink. That's how nasty it tasted. And like, so yeah. And it's like, I, I was no, running, I don't blame you for being celibate. Yeah, I was, I think I was just running into those issues with a lot of guys before that. It's like, I, with girls, I feel like I don't have to ask for like basic human decency. Like when I hook up with a girl. <laughs> with guys, they act like, like if you ask for basic human decency, they're like, well, I didn't know you wanted to date me. That is literally not what I asked for. What's I'm just asking for you to like respect my boundaries. And I I heard like a lot of girls say like porn men are different, blah, blah, blah. But at this point, like I, I, I've never really been in love with someone who's mutually in love with me. I feel like I've, of course, been into guys who aren't who into aren't me. Into you, yeah. I feel but, like that happens a lot. I feel oh, like guys, it happens to guys too though. Like guys always want a girl who's like, like doesn't seem to be in it. Like, you know what I mean? A girl's jumping all over you. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's like a people like the little around chick. Well, well, daddy issues is a thing also. Yeah, of course. And for guys, a lot of time it's like mommy issues. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of the guys who I've like been in love with, it's like I notice that there's like a mutual infatuation for there's about like a three month period where it's like mm -hmm. we're equally as into each other. Like they're obsessed. And then like one day they're just like, oh, actually, like, this isn't what I'm looking for whatsoever. And mm -hmm. it's like that's just happened to me so fucking consistently that I'm not. You think people hit on you? and shit differently because you do like adult content? You think people think it's cool to just like come Nowadays, I remember a guy like came up to me and hit on me and he was like, I was wearing an OnlyFans hoodie. He's like, this is really how you want to present yourself to the world. I was like, yeah, what's wrong with it? Like I got pretty combative and I was like, yeah, what's wrong with it? I'm like, are you insecure? Is like that why you're saying like, is this? And then he then he was like, well, I just thought you were really cute, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm just saying like, if you're trying to get a boyfriend like me and I was like, I would never want a boyfriend like you. <laughs> What do, these, like, what? what do these guys think? Who do they think they are? <laughs> I'm like, do you like it? I, I heard it's called negging when a guy like puts you down to then be like, but like if you wanted someone like me, it's like they'll, they'll kind of insult you. That's but then weird. Be They're like, insecure. They oh, want, so they insecure. wanted to make you feel better to make themselves yeah, feel I've, better. Yeah, I've never been into a guy who's like possessive and secure like that. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I I did have a situation ship for like seven months and you would I like, get a little I get a little possessive. You I, do? I, maybe not. I don't think an unhealthy amount. Yeah, I, I, I don't at bit, all. I'm no. like, if you try to control who I hang out with, because I have so many guy friends and like, trust me when I say like 95% of my guy friends would never fuck me because they just know me that well. They're mm -hmm. like, you're like their sister. They're like, she FaceTimes me while she's shitting. Like, there's no yeah. way that I could ever be sexually attracted to her. Sneezing and pooping. And all. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's like, if you <laughs> told me time. I couldn't be hanging out with these friends because there's like this possibility that they'd want to fuck me, I'm like, no, that's, we're immediately yeah, 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 nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a little, that's a little. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's like to know that I'm like celibate for this long and like mm -hmm. and if i do start dating someone and it's like you're you're the first dick i've had in two and a half years and you're gonna try to get controlling knowing how much self-control mm -hmm. i have that's wild to me i think i would be uncomfortable with my significant other fucking other guys yeah i don't think i'd be uncomfortable with them fucking other girls well yeah because like you could get turned on by that like i i think girl because like a girl hooking up with a girl like there's something I can give that they don't have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless, like maybe they're be like, I don't know, but there's something I have that they don't have. Yeah. Another dude fucking your girl. That sounds like, would that, did that bother you? Like, you, would you date another adult creator? 
Not a man, no, but a girl, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I had like the biggest crush on this girl, Maddie May. Like me and her were talked about hooking up a lot. I, I, I think I know who that is. Yeah, me and her. Uh, she was the one who like spit uh, on Ryan and he threw up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. So like, that's me and how her, I know who that is. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so me and her have talked about hooking up for like literally such a long time, but like there have just been like a few things here and there, like are just so many fucking like scheduling fucking issues, but like we like have like a mutual crush on each other, right? <laughs> scheduling and it's, like, fucking issues. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking annoying. Um. But like, she's someone that I like could see myself dating, you know? Really? Like, she's someone. Does she know that? Have you told her that? Oh, yeah. Well, like, we've had discussions. Like, she said, like, she wants to take me on dates, blah, blah, blah. I oh, just wow. feel like, like, the timing hasn't really been right so far, you know? But like, that's totally fine. Like, I could see myself dating another female adult creator. I can't mm -hmm. see myself dating a man adult creator. Do your parents have a problem with that? Like, if you're getting like with like girls, do they think that's like okay. against code? <laughs> well, there's like this code. joke that my friend Lucas Zalnak made, and he's like, it doesn't matter if your dad makes like a hundred million dollars. He has a hedge fund worth mm -hmm. this much. He's like, if you find out that your daughter is bisexual, she doesn't have a trust fund anymore. <laughs> Why? Like, because if you're if your dad is like this conservative hedge fund manager, like you're mm -hmm. not going to be getting this. My dad doesn't know I'm bisexual. My mom, I I accidentally told her I was supposed mm -hmm. to be on mismatch like yeah, a yeah. year and a half or about a year ago, and this girl bailed halfway through. She's like family oh, you were emergency. Going on a date with a girl. Yeah, I went on a date with a girl. So I accidentally told my mom, oh, yeah, I was on this dating show with a girl. And my mom was like, who'd you date? Who'd you go on a date with? I forgot what her name was, but I'm just pissed that she left halfway through. And then like the whole episode had to be scrapped. And like since she left halfway through, we couldn't even get a replacement. So she just like ruined that whole day of filming. That's for us. so annoying. I, I, was, I think I, I filmed that day. Yeah, I cried. I literally went home and cried because I'm like, Wasted I spent your so whole much day. effort yeah, on this. Yeah, what? And like, I remember the filmers were like, you're one of the funniest people we've yeah, had on what? today, even well, though they were like, please they, tone it back. Look at you back. Bit. Oh, did they tell you? Yeah, they were. Oh, because it's OFTV and you can't be saying, yeah, it's not like normal OF. Yeah. Because I, but like you know the stuff i'm i'm just a little, a little. yeah I have that's no your filter. thing though that's your thing and i think that's what people love about yeah <laughs> but yeah I, I went home and then i told my mom and she's like you're bad like the way she her voice like cracked and she's like that's okay i think more often than not like the way you said that i think I, you see parents getting more upset if their son is gay than if their daughter is gay yeah you know what I mean? So when you said the thing, like when you when you found out your daughter is by like no trust fund, uh -huh. I feel like that's like, I mean, maybe your case, but I feel like more often than not, it's not like automatic. Like, I mean, here's the thing, like if like parents, there's like a, it's that like hip girls, hypocritical. I, I feel like a lot of parents, at least not 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 even just parents. I feel like people in general are always like, oh, you're bi. That means you're experimenting with girls, but you're into guys. Yeah. But like, I, that's just not the case. Like, I will say, I think I'm like 60% straight and like 40% by, or maybe mm -hmm. like 65, 35, something also like that. Also could change every, yeah, every year. It every, really, you know I, mean, I mean, for me, it's just like such the energy that people give off. And mm -hmm. I feel like- I, Dude, I wanna, I need to Google the word for what yeah. type it is, cause we're gonna find it out, I'm gonna yeah, tell you. Yeah, cause like I'm into like femme <laughs> girls, for example. Like I really love like femme Look, presenting yeah. girls, but I like femme presenting girls who are very daddy. Like I yeah, like, yeah. and that's like very rare to find because I like the guys woman. who give me like daddy energy. It's yeah, like, yeah. they're just, they're very confident. You said confident. you want the girls they're, to give you daddy energy. Yeah. That's so why that, you said the girl wants to take you on a date and shit. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. That's like daddy energy. So like, I love Dommy Mommies. Mm -hmm. Like, it's funny because um, me and my friend Bambi hooked up and she was like, she was like, you're such a good girl, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay. And she's like, you dirty fucking slut. The way that my squirt like, just project out on like that's what you like like it yeah. was like the dirty talk to guys like, i want i want him. someone to be like super rough with me and i think that's something that men give me mm -hmm. that women don't and i still love hooking up with women but it's mm -hmm. like i want to be beat up a little bit i want to be told what to do like i'm a brat like mm -hmm. if i like start being aggressive with you like i want you to be like smack you back in the place yeah that's what i, like I want that. i like that too. I yeah like, that like why, why is it so hard to find femme presenting girls that want to do that for me good then let me let me let's let's end on a banger right here okay yeah okay is, do you have like an experience? Because we were talking earlier about this this girl who we had on the podcast uh -huh. earlier, or the other day, however you want me, to, however you want me to frame it, Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> she said she likes to be like bent over in front of the wall, like fucked from behind, and like likes if you crack her head off the wall. So I got a concussion once doing. <laughs> That? That's a thing? <laughs> well, okay. I Because he, he like, said he's, he's done that. He's yeah. Done that. It wasn't like my head was just like constantly going like that. But I, I remember saying like slam my head against the wall. And this like, he was like half a seg. Um, he was what? Oh. Half a uh, seg. Wait, this represent. is in college? Uh, it was like we, I just graduated okay, okay, college. Okay. He was like a year or two older than me. Were you in a sorority? 
No, I got okay. kicked out of Rush, but like, I, cause I, I just, I relate way more to frat boys than I do to like sorority girls. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, I was like, say my head against the wall. I'm like, he wasn't really doing it. And I'm like, say my head against the wall. You won't. That's always like the you, you, won't, you won't. won't. He's like, huh. I had like a bump on my head waking up the next morning. It was like. See, I would feel so bad. Like I get, I get weird like that. Like I get. He did not feel bad, but also it's like. I God, feel bad. That girls like so smack me good. harder, like punch me in the face. I'm like, I'll be like, nah. After I got my chin implant, I'm like, cause I used to love to be slapped in my face to the point it went numb, but I can't do that anymore cause it can it fuck up, up the, the chin implant. And I'm like, that was a few thousand dollars. We're not doing that. So not banging your head on the walls or anything like you've done, not even just on, on pleasure, like not content, like anything that you're like, that would make me be like, holy fuck, like that sounds painful or like I've never painful. heard of that. Um, like I mean, smacking your head off the wall to me while you're getting fucked is crazy. Apparently not to everyone else. That, yeah, that, that doesn't sound like super crazy to me. I mean, I don't know, like, I've like fucked on porta potties. I fucked on acid. I fucked on Molly. Like I, I love fucking to raves. Like one of my, my one of my fantasies. And porta potties, is that gross? I blacked out. I don't remember okay. it. Um, <laughs> so I just, what? I just know it. I just know what happened. It happened. You heard I about it? I don't remember. Yeah, I heard about it because I thought like I fucked the guy for the first time the weekend weird. after. He's like, no. Shut up. He was like, you we were like, damn, this is the first time I was fucking. Yeah. He was like, at least he was like, actually. No, 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 no. We yeah, but I mean, blah, blah, blah. to be fair, like I, I, like you know, some girls would be like, that wasn't okay. I'm like. No, like I know for a fact you I dragged them in there. <laughs> no, I initiated everything. It's like here's the thing, like you know, there have been a few times where like men have crossed a lot of boundaries yeah. with me, but I know a lot of the time if I'm like super blacked out, drunk, like I know I'm the one initiating yep. it. Like mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. I'm like I'm dying for that dick tonight. But uh, my my so fantasy. You've not been blacked out and like wanted dick and like folded. Um, I've been very drunk, but my self control is Good just job. like out of like. Cause like I what I haven't drank in like over two months like okay so that probably helps yourself maybe. yeah I there's just but not two really years reason. you've been over two years two and a half yeah but my, my that's a fantasy, lot of drunk night that's a lot of random drunk nights that you held strong I mean <laughs> I've maybe I maybe drink once a month once every oh. two months so like not really I mean so and also it's like I'm so attracted to like people's energies that like mm -hmm. there was one guy I almost hard. folded for but like I'm such good friends with him that he's like I don't want to ruin this really friendship. what a guy. Oh, he's a great guy. Great guy. Like one of my probably best why you friends. Wanna, probably why you would fuck him. Because huh? he's a good guy. Yeah, no, he's such a good guy. And he's like, <laughs> uh, I don't want to ruin our friendship. Like, mm -hmm. And I know he was sexually attracted to me when he first met me because like that was a guy I had a celibate sleepover with. Yeah. But like, no, honestly, oh, I'm so... Guy. I'm so happy he made that decision because I don't think it would have ended well, like Good. whatsoever. But like, but um, anyway, my fantasy yeah, is yeah, to bring yeah. a guy Let's like to a dubstep festival. Like I'm going to see Excision in Cancun in uh, late April, and mm -hmm. it's like to feel the dubstep vibrations and to fuck to that with the 140 BPM. Like nothing makes me come I'm harder than listening hurt. to dubstep. Like nothing makes me come like harder than that. Like dubstep while you're fucking. Yeah, like if you put on Drake, dry, dry like a raisin. <laughs> If you put on the weekend, <laughs> I dry Damn. the fuck up. Like, but you Good, put on dubstep, like the way my vagina just like drips wet. I remember like one of the Kappa Sigs I was fucking in. I fucked a lot of Kappa Sigs. Like, they, <laughs> one of the Kappa Sigs. Yeah, fucking. well, I, I used to fuck a friend group of Kappa Sigs and then they would be like, so whose dick was the best? Whose dick was the biggest? Blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, so yours was like the longest. His was like the widest. Like he fucked the best. Uh -huh. You just like had a, like, you just fucked like a bunny rabbit. Like you need to work on your game. But it was just so funny how they'd all be like, well, who, who was the best? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, none of them were like jealous because none of us really had any respect yeah. for each other. <laughs> um, it was just like kind of fun to fuck. But uh, he's like, why can't you just be like a normal girl? Like, why can't we just like listen to the weekend and fuck? And I'm like, do you like, do you want me to enjoy this or yeah, not? What? Do you <laughs> want me to like enjoy this? Like, <laughs> say, yo, be thankful that I'm yeah. even yeah. in this situation. We're gonna put on whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so deals, thank you. Thank you. Wait, plug the socials. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, plug everything. Just go to it's deals, I T S D E E L Z dot com, and that has everything. And then my podcast is that's offensive, baby. What day does that drop? What? What day of the week does the podcast drop? Tuesdays. Titty Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Thank you right, so thank much you, for coming. Of course. <laughs> You're listening to Joey Joy Radio.